Here we are, it's the summer of 2021. World of Warcraft has turned into a crap version of the Avengers. Asmongold is streaming Final Fantasy XIV. Ninja is streaming Final Fantasy XI on a private server. Cats and dogs are living together, it's mass hysteria! Between all of this and the 20 year anniversary of Final Fantasy XI coming soon, there has been a slow but steady increase in interest for the game. As a result, I've seen more and more people coming back and even picking up the game for the first time. And that is wonderful. Once you've managed to acclimate yourself to the archaic system of level grinding and quests that refuse to hold your hand, before too long you may have found yourself reaching level 99 only to realize that, oh no, the game is really just beginning. What do I do? Where do I start? What gear do, do I, I really need to God, kill the Shadow Lord? Where do I go? I just want to get sturdy, but I'm totally lost! For anyone who is new and returning to Final Fantasy XI, welcome! I'll do my best to break down the best things to do that will lead you to having a better character, but more importantly, a much more enjoyable time while you're playing Final Fantasy XI. I'll even present this in a list format. So here we go. Hit it, Johnny! Number one, focus on all of the story missions, especially Rhapsody's of Vanadil. Now this might sound simple or even optional. Maybe you're someone who wants to just dive right on into the end game. Well, hold it right there, Timmy. Take off those swim trunks because you got work to do. Some of the storylines are mandatory to even get access to these endgame activities. If you want to fight the modern endgame version of something, you have to have cleared it in the story mode. This ranges from high tier battlefields like the Shadow Lord, Omega, Lilith, Odin, all the way to even having access to something like Omen. Between the Records of Eminence bonuses and the Rhapsodies of Vanadil bonuses, you'd be a fool to skip out on these storylines. Go out and do them, they're fantastic. Number two, start thinking about capping all of your relevant skills early on. I mean, this might seem like a no brainer, but you would be surprised how many people try to just skip past this part like it's not important, when really, it's one of the biggest determining factors for your character, even if it is super tedious. I mean, you can't do big dick damage if you're not even hitting the damn monster. And it's super obvious to everyone that you don't have your magic skills capped, and when we see that dreaded resist tech show up on screen, you know? For weapons, this is easy enough to do once you've reached level 99 and there's a ton of guides on how to do it super effectively for every skill but basically for weapons just grab a low damage weapon and go smack stuff one favored target is like the uh Urgonites right outside of adulin those work good but if your job requires magic skills especially something like enhancing magic or whatever it's good to have all of that capped out if it gets to be too much, there is no shame in buying the skill up books from the auction house or from the Sparks NPC, but definitely do not skimp on your skills. These are super important. After all, everybody likes a guy who's good with his hands. Uh, that's a lot of damage. Number three, in your home nation, you may have stumbled across the NPC that sells gear for a new currency called Sparks. Upon reaching level 99, you may have thought to yourself, well, this is the level 99 gear. I'll just buy this as well. <clears throat> Wrong, it's a trap. Don't buy this gear, it's worthless. No! I myself fell into this trap when I first came back in 2019 and it's super easy to do. I mean, how are you supposed to know that this gear isn't good? What you'll actually want to do is wander off to the mystical lands of Eastern Adulin and talk to these two secret arms merchants. They sell item level 119 gear, which is better than the item level 117 gear available for Sparks. You're going to want to pick up a homestead weapon and a full set of the plus one armor for your class. This is going to cost you about 13,000 bailed. And how do you earn 13,000 bailed? Well, that's the easy part. Either roam around completing reeves around Adulin or complete a handful of these supply missions, or simply trade 13 copper vouchers to your Sparks NPC and exchange those for bail. Yeah, you've been saving those copper vouchers, right? Now that you're fully kitted out in your brand new bailed gear, you are completely impervious to all content that came before the item level cap. 
So if you were struggling to finish those stories before, now you can just go back and finish them with ease. But make no mistake, this gear is legitimate trash. And you will get nowhere in the actual end game wearing this stuff. Think of this as your level 99 starting gear. You might be the biggest badass that you've ever been, but really, this is just the beginning. Number four, on the topic of gear that you can get from NPCs, something that is extremely easy to overlook is your monthly records of eminence objectives. These will reward you with deeds of heroism, which can be exchanged to the Amen NPC in your home city. The rewards range from a paltry smattering of gill all the way to complete sets of item level 119 artifact armor. I realize there's about 8,000 records of eminence objectives, but you definitely won't want to forget about the monthly ones right there at the very bottom of the list. Number five, domain invasion. This is like baby's first endgame, okay? This sounds complex, but it's really not. This is the easiest way to earn some of the best gear in the game. There are three zones that will have a dragon spawn in them periodically. If you're in the Unity chat, you'll see this message. Ozzy Dahaka is spawning in Eshazita. Oh no, Nagaraj is spawning in Esha Ruan! Oh dear, oh dear, Quetzalcoatl is spawning in Ryzen Jima! Oh man, this is a problem! We can't have stray dragons roaming around Vanadil, so I guess we're gonna have to go handle it! Once you get to the zone that has a dragon in it, go talk to the NPC near the entrance. Click on them and click the button, Receive Elver Seal, and then have them teleport you to the fight. Wait a few minutes, smack a few monsters, and then poke the big dragon boy with a dozen other players in their trust. And then you're done. You're gonna get some domain points at the end of the fight. Once you've reached the maximum amount of points you can have for the day, waddle on over to Nord and talk to Zareen. He will show you a huge list of potential rewards, and these include some of the best accessories and armor pieces in the game. Even these weapons are great to pick up because they can be augmented to be even more powerful, and they're gonna be the best weapon you have until you get like a fully upgraded ambuscade weapon or start working on a mythic or something, you know? These are pretty much as good as it's gonna get for a long time. So needless to say, it's great to do domain invasion each and every day to start gearing up. Number six. Everything we've talked about up to this point is stuff that you can do solo. And I know that you probably love to fly alone there, Maverick, but believe it or not, the game gets much better once you have Goose riding along. What are you looking at? It's time you stop hiding in the shadows, playing with yourself in the dark, whining on Reddit and leaving comments about how sad you are about the state of the game, and actually just become a member of the damn community. Really, this game is super easy to make friends, and there are tons of people who are either at the same spot that you're at right now, or they're willing to help you out with whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. I've met so many people who have this perception that the game is more or less meant to be played solo now, and nothing could be further from the truth. You see a ton of guides online about how to accomplish X, Y, or Z by yourself with trusts, and there's not nearly enough people talking about how fun this game is to play with other folks. So. Take a chance and try joining a Link Shell. Just go to the local Link Shell concierge and see who's there. And keep a positive attitude, because if you have a positive attitude, people are way more likely to absorb your positive energy and want to actually help you out with stuff. But if you prefer just playing with yourself, I guess that's up to you, boss. I just don't get the point of playing an MMORPG if you're going to cut out the whole MMO part of it. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. McDonald's wants you to give yourself a chance. A chance to find out all the wonderful things you really can be. And so do I. Number seven. As mentioned in the previous entry, Ambuscade is where a ton of great gear comes from. Ambuscade is super easy to get started. All you do is click on Records of Eminence. Under Basics, stepping into an Ambuscade, then go talk to Gorpa Masorpa and Mahara. He should give you a Ambuscade Volume Primer 2. Once you have your primer, just go talk to the book and join your first regular Ambuscade. Easy peasy, kill some monsters, no big deal. The fights in here range from month to month, and there's always two variants. The regular version, which you could do with trust and is worth a very small amount of points, or the intense version, which is worth a ton of points, but you have to do these with real players, generally speaking. 
The ambuscade capes and certain weapons like the nagling are the best in slot for many jobs, but even some of the armor pieces remain top tier all the way into the endgame, and this gives you an excellent opportunity to get better at playing your class with other people. Even if you guys are just playing on the easiest version of Intense Ambuscade, or one of the harder versions of the regular Ambuscade, it gives you an idea of places that you're doing well, and other places that you need to improve. The best part is, if you wipe, you can just come right back in and try again, which is why I think it's a good learning aid for some difficult content yet to come. Number 8. Start clearing out high tier battlefields, going after Unity NMs as well as the tier 1 NMs from Esha Zita and Esha Ruan. Once you have some Ambuscape gear and maybe a new weapon from Domain Invasion, it's time to go on some adventures with the boys. Some high tier battlefields will drop great pieces of gear. Omega, for instance, drops a great earring for melee fighters and some awesome knuckles for puppet masters. But they're also a primary source of REMS pages, which are used to upgrade your artifact and relic armor to 119 variants. You can also buy those REM pages with sparks, but why would you when you could go have fun with the boys instead? Some of the Unity NMs have really great pieces of gear as well, and it's worth checking out the rewards list. You might find something worth going after. Similarly, clearing out the tier 1 NMs from Zeta and Ruan might also prove to be a challenge, but they too drop some sweet pieces of gear and abjurations. Once you clear out all of the tier 1s, you can start to move on to the tier 2s and just keep that cycle moving forward. Clearing out all of these Esha NMs is actually a key component in earning an Aeonic weapon, if that's something that you're interested in doing down the line. Number 9. Earning Capacity Points If you're a returning player, you might remember Merit Points. Well, these are a lot like those, only much more involved. You earn some amazing benefits in the long run. Some jobs completely change once you've reached a certain threshold in your Capacity Points journey. Reaching 3 stars on a job denoting that you're a master is an awesome goal, but do it with the boys, because grinding these by yourself is a miserable experience, and setting up a good Apex mob farm is a lot like setting up a classic experience points party. You want a well-balanced crew because Apex mobs take extra damage from skill chains and magic bursts, and this makes that go so much faster. Once you've reached this stage though, you should really be figuring out your job and what you can really do, and having all of these experiences with your friends actually helps you become a much more well-rounded player. And that's the important thing. Plenty of people go online and buy a crap ton of gill and then use it to attempt to like brute force their way into the endgame, buying ambuscade runs and superior five weapons on the auction house that they didn't even realize they couldn't equip, and, and buying items from mercenaries, and buying their capacity points, and so on. But you can always spot these players from a mile away because they're awful at actually playing their jobs. Even the best gear in the game can't make up for an unskilled player. And yes, this is coming from me. It's well known that I am a complete idiot. Number 10, have fun. I know this seems like a weird thing to put on the list, but really, games are meant to be a great time. If you're taking the game too seriously, it's time to relax and just take a step back. Everyone is on their own journey and it should be a fun and memorable one. Who knows what the 20 year anniversary might hold, all of this work could really be for nothing. So don't sweat the small stuff and just have a good time. If you do all of the stuff on this list, not only will you start gearing up quicker than you might have expected to, but you also start having a lot of fun while soaking in the wonderful world of Vanna Deal. Soon you'll find yourself making new memories and having awesome stories to share. That sense of community from classic Final Fantasy XI is still here, all you have to do is look for it. I mean, just the other day, we got someone in the link shell who had never played Final Fantasy XI before. They started playing Final Fantasy XIV at launch and they ran out of content until Endwalker comes out. So they thought, I'm gonna give Final Fantasy XI a try. And now they're hooked and they're having a great time. However, they did have one complaint. And I quote, I just wish that I could keep my avatars out at all times, but my refresh and avatar perpetuation cost is just too high. My greatest wish is to stand outside of the stock markets with Fenrir summoned, but I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that. Upon hearing this, I dusted off the old jelly bean I call a brain and thought, well, I think we could rustle up a crap ton of refresh gear and avatar perpetuation cost gear uh, from simple stuff like Unity NMs and Esha NMs and maybe even upgrade a few pieces of AF from the high tier battlefields. So I put out a call to the boys in the new Game Plus Link Shell, and we got to work.
In just under eight hours, we managed to help our new friend earn more than enough gear to keep his big purple puppers around at all times. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? And now Kenya can intimidate all of the new players who come out of the stock markets who have an unrational fear of digital doggos roaming in Gusterberg. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, that's easy for you guys to say. You're already a bunch of big beefy boys and already have in-game gear. And well, talent is quite the specimen. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Whew, is it a uh, is it hot in here or is it just me? <laughs> oh, Mr. Mans. <laughs> Oh, can we uh, can we crack a window or something? The reality is, it was all about working together. And Kinya being a hardworking and positive person, his positivity made it easy for us to want to help him out. He had already been trying to earn this gear by himself and just needed a helping hand. And trust me, when I first inspected his equipment, <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but he learned a lot along the way. We included him in each and every fight. He was giving us buffs and healing us and opening skill chains and well, just learning how to do skill chains with other summoners. It was awesome. At no point did we relegate him just to sit on the sidelines. He was involved the entire time. And I think that's how it should be because earning things for yourself is half the fun of the game. If you take anything from this video, I think it should be this. Getting gear is cool and all, but it means way less than just having a great time with your friends. However, if you can manage to do both at the same time, well, then really you've hit the jackpot. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you guys have some tips for new and returning players, feel free to share them in the comments. If you want to tell me that I'm a complete idiot, feel free to leave that in the comments as well, even though I already know that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those as well. Please join the Discord if you want to chat about Eleven or just share cat memes or something. Uh, other than that, delete all your other social media, treat others how you want to be treated, Kumbaya, have a great day. Toodaloo! Emperor's down. I got him, boys. Uh, Rama's out. Emperor's <laughs> <laughs> <Kurt is> down. <laughs> Fair enough. Whoa. Hey, 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 there it is. Oh, there's a. You just got all four of them this round. You got three in your personal pool and one oh, in your treasure wow. pool. Bro.